Hey guys, welcome today. I want to just talk to you guys for a few minutes about volume. I get asked this question a lot. Paul, how do you go from one house to three houses, to five houses, to 10 houses? Like how much more work is that? How much more um, energy does that expend on your part? And I just want to talk about a smaller volume. Maybe you're going from one house to three houses or one house to four houses. And a lot of people are like, man, I need to double my employees. I need to do twice as much work. And, and I want to clarify that, that that's not true, okay? When I went from one house to two houses, the workload almost felt the same. When I went from two houses to four houses, it increased a little bit, but not much. And I'm going to show you how to do that today and walk you through the process that I used that's been beneficial to me and my teams. And it'll allow you to go and do more volume. Now, when you start hitting 10, 12, I mean, I was doing 18 at a time and I needed help. I brought someone on to manage the properties, all that kind of stuff. That's a whole different level because when you're doing that many at a time and you're hitting 50 to 100 a year, yes, you need help. But I'm here to tell you today, you can easily manage under five renovations, under six renovations yourself. Okay, so let's dive right in. How do I manage four properties? Let's just use four properties. How do I manage four properties at one time? And the first key a lot of people make the mistake on is understand what your role is in this, okay? Your role in this is you are a supervisor, okay? You are not the foreman, you are not the superintendent, you are not the boots on the ground. Now maybe you have hands on and you were doing one house by yourself and you were doing the renovation. That's okay, but you can never scale, okay? You cannot yourself manage and do the work on four renovations at one time. You just can't do it because houses will sit, it will cost you money for them sitting. You can't do that. So you gotta get out of that mindset. I, I did it, guys, at first I did it too. I managed my own renovation and I did the work and it, it sucked the life out of me, it sucked the hours out of me. It, it was a lot more pressure on my family. I was missing sporting events and stuff like that with my son. So I said, okay, I need to be a manager in this relationship. This is my company. This company needs to work for me, not me work for it, right? And I need to be the supervisor. So I need to hire a manager, whether it's a foreman, a GC, a superintendent, whatever you want to call them. I need to have a point of contact for someone on the job site who's there 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week, that's overseeing the entire job overseeing the guys doing the work, overseeing the subs, overseeing everything. My job, okay guys, get this mindset, because when your mindset changes, it allows you to grow, okay? Your job is a supervisor. You are the owner of the company, you're the owner of that property, and it's your job to make sure it keeps moving on task, on point, timelines are being met, budget staying within means, and your job is to manage that with the one person on the job site, the boss, okay? So you are working directly with them, you're holding them accountable, you're asking them for timelines. How do we do that? We do site visits. We show up at least two days a week per job and, and walk in. So it's either me, uh, my property manager, it could be a couple other different people that show up to the job site and say, okay, where are we at, where are we going? And it usually happens at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week, right? Because I wanna gauge what they got done. They can't just say, well, we're doing this and this today, and that doesn't work for me. I need every single Monday a form filled out that says, Monday we're attacking this, Tuesday we're attacking this, Wednesday we're doing this, because guys, without a plan, you won't succeed. If you're just gonna go in there and your guys are just gonna do whatever they wanna do, it's gonna take so much longer, there has to be organization. Guys, that comes from the top, that comes from you, so you are the manager. Be okay in that role. Be okay inspecting the property and saying, hey guys, this isn't done correct. This craftsmanship over here looks terrible. What happened over here? Or, hey, guys, that's an amazing fan. Great job hanging it. It looks awesome. And give them praise at the same time. But your job, be okay with being the boss, being the manager, being the overseer, the owner. A lot of people, they're afraid to have those conversations with their contractor. And I'm like, if you don't have that conversation with your contractor right now, he's going to do it like this or she's going to do it like this from now on. So if they're doing it in the next 100 houses for you, you're always gonna have this problem. Nip it in the butt now, handle it now, show them, develop them, teach them now how you want it done and you'll be successful. So the first one, you are a supervisor, you are the owner, you are the boss, be okay having hard conversations. Be okay keeping them on timelines. Why are we off this timeline? 
I need it fixed. If you gotta work Saturday, get back on timelines, do it. Why are we over budget already? Okay, show me, explain it to me, let me see it. Be okay being the boss, guys. The second thing that is huge when you start doing volume is communication. Communication solves so many problems, okay, before they even happen. So communication, guys, it can happen in so many different ways. Like for me, every Monday morning, I'm on a phone call. Hey, GC, hey, boss, hey, superintendent, what's going on at the job site? What's our plan for this week? What problems are we facing? Who do we need to bring in? And having that conversation that gets their brain right, they might be, maybe they were off for the weekend, their brain needs to restart and get back on task. A lot of my guys, what they do Sunday night, they're going through everything. I know what I have to do for Monday. I know I gotta pick this up, I gotta start here, and I'm getting it Sunday night. Totally cool with that, I love that. It lets me know they're thinking about and planning their next day, okay? So, communication is key. Do I have to be there all the time? No. We all have phones, we all have video, we all have pictures, we can meet them out for lunches, we don't always have to meet on the job site, but communication is key because when there's a question, in, in, in a boss's mind on the job site, a foreman or a GC, what are they gonna do? They're gonna do it the way they think that they should do it or the way they've done it in the past versus what's Paul's vision? What's flipping expert's vision? What's Kelsey's vision for this? And for me, I want that open dialogue. Call me, text me, send me a video. Let's get on a chat, let's get on a Zoom, let, let's Skype, whatever we gotta do so I can see the problem. I can give you direction and, and we're handling it. There's no guessing. So when you go from one house, that's really easy to do, but when you start going four or five, six, there's a lot more communication. And you as the owner, you as the boss of everything, your job literally is to keep the ball moving, is to keep that project moving forward. Because if a project's sitting still, your contractors aren't working, you're losing money because every day that house sits, what? You have money out, right? You purchase the house. It might be a hard money lender. It might be You're wasting time and money. So your job is to communicate as much as possible. I don't think you can over communicate. Now you can nag and you can show up at the job site too many times and all that. I understand that. But the more vision you cast for a construction job, uh, the more you pour in and develop your teams, the more you're going to get in return and the less the frustration there's going to be. So communication, that's number two. Guys, the third and last one is accountability. You have to hold your guys accountable for everything, okay? The good, the bad. Like I said, praise them when they're doing good. If something's not right, guys, you don't need to go in there and crush them. You don't need to go in there and talk bad to them. You don't need to cuss at them. There's ways to do stuff and get your point across, but at the same time, be firm, right? You can go in there and say, hey, listen, this is unacceptable. This is, this is a reflection of our company. This is a reflection of you. This is a reflection of your team. Is that okay with you being done like that? Well, no, I know we shouldn't have done it like that. I just didn't know, you know. No, we always do things with excellence. We always do things right. If something's wrong, we wanna fix it. Some family is moving into this house. And what am I doing? I'm sharing vision with them. I'm casting um, how we do things, culture. How do we do things as a company with them? Because maybe they've never had that. Maybe they've never had anybody pour into them. Maybe they've never had anybody hold them accountable. They just showed up at the job site. They did it. If it was okay, it was fine. If it wasn't okay, they just said, oh, I'm leaving this job, and they went to another job. We're not like that. We want these guys to be with us a long time. We're pouring time, energy, skill, knowledge into our contractors. We want to see that return, and that means stay with us. We're gonna do this together, we're in this together. We, we need to make this house the best that we possibly can for everybody. So, check out the quality of their workmanship. Hold them accountable to that. Hold them accountable to timelines. Contractors are tough about that. They don't wanna be like bogged down by a timeline. I give my guys a sheet and what are we doing Monday? What are we doing Tuesday? What are we doing Wednesday? What are we doing? They send it to me Monday before they start work. Send it to me, I wanna see it. And then on Friday, when it's payday, we're going out to inspect it and we're gonna say, okay, did this get done? Why did this not get done? Explain, and there might be a great reason why it didn't get done. The plumbing pipe burst when we did it, Paul, we had to bring this in, do this, it took us an extra seven hours. Got it. Now I at least understand, but I'm still holding them accountable, right? It's not just, oh, we're seven hours behind and they don't answer for it, whether it's good or bad. So you have somebody you show up on a job site and they're drunk or you think they're using drugs, hold them accountable to that. That's, that's not okay. Like, what's going on with this guy? I see he's, we had a guy um, not too long ago, you know, he shows up, he's high. Like, I can tell. I used to be a state trooper. Like, I can tell if you're on something. 
I went over the form. I said, you need to handle this. Go get him drug tested. If he's on drugs, he's out of here. If he's not on drugs, what's what's going on in his personal life? Maybe he's got something going on. And and you can be the, the sounding board for them. You can be the sounding board and listen and help them through that because that's our job, right? As the owner, as the bosses, we want them to succeed. So, but hold them accountable. Budget, that's another big one. These guys like to go over budget. These guys like just, well, I, I, I didn't really need it, but I went and bought these four parts. Well, why don't you measure it exactly and go get the exact part you needed instead of, hey, I was already out. Uh, I just picked up one, uh, you know, four of them and hoping one of them would work. Well, now you got to do a return. Now it's hitting the credit card and coming back off. So now accounting's having to deal with that. Like, why don't you just call the job site, have somebody measure it and get the exact same size, okay? So when I talk about accountability, a lot of it's just coaching, right? A lot of it's like, hey, listen, I'm watching what you're doing. We want to do stuff with excellence. I'm here to support you if you need it, but at the same time, you got to be truthful. You got to be straight with me. I'm going to hold you accountable because I want us all to be successful. And when you hold them accountable and you start pouring into them and developing them, it's less stress on them, right? They're like, okay, I learned that last house. So on this house, I'm going to do it this way. And then you save time, you save energy. And then what? You start coming in under budget because you're not making all the same mistakes. So guys, I hope that this helped you, but make sure I, I see a lot of people that go out and try to crush their teams. I see a lot of people that talk down to their teams. I see a lot of people that curse. Like, there's no reason for that. You're never going to get further with that. Love on your teams. Like, guys, we take our teams fishing. We take them on trips. We buy them things for Christmas. We give them time off. All these different things because we love them and care about them. And we want what's best for them and their family. But I, I hope this video helped you. I know it's a short one. It's a three-point thing. But, guys, this will radically help you change your mindset from going from one or two houses to four to five to keep growing. So hope this helped you. We love you guys and we'll see you soon.